Hi everyone, Josh from Accents here, bringing you the Q&A for the EMU One. As we've recently released new firmware for the EMU, we thought we'd put it out to our social media platforms on what questions you would like answered about the product. We're going to cover a few of them here. Some of them have been new questions that have come in, others are questions that many people have asked in the past and we thought we'd revisit them all in one video. For future updates of all of our products and for more Q&As or any questions you'd like answered, visit our social media platforms or drop us an email and we'll be happy to help or put out another video. Configuring your EMU with fuel gauges is an easy process using an AccuSense NGT1 and our free-to-download toolkit software. Simply connect to your NGT1 and select the EMU1 from the serial CAN device list and click New Config to create a new configuration for your EMU1 or select Load from Device to edit an existing configuration. Go into your EMU1 config and change the gauge parameter to fluid level, then set the reference to fuel. Once set, define the physical gauge you have on board in the configuration. Finally, click Send to Device from the ribbon menu and the symbol will go green to indicate that the configuration has been loaded into the device correctly and from there you're good to go. As far as we're aware, no customer has come to us with that specific scenario. In terms of getting a display configured specifically for one operation, your best bet is to speak to the manufacturer. We can always support you with that and reach out to Rain Marine ourselves as well. Currently, the auxiliary inputs on the EMU aren't being used. However, there is plans for future updates to have these supported on the device, but we aren't 100% sure on what they'll be used for just yet. So when it comes to using the EMU with any setup, analog engines, um, senders and gauges, we don't use the engine manufacturer or the engine model as the method of configuring the EMU because there's so much variety with senders and gauges and it's quite plausible that you would have two identical engines but with different senders and gauges connected to them. So whilst I can half say yes in terms of that as long as the engine is using analog senders and gauges, yes, the EMU will work with it and work with the display, we, need, we would need to know or you would need to find out what senders and gauges you've got. On our website, there is a list of all of the default library gauges on the EMU, um, but there is also a custom gauge tool as well through ActiSense Toolkit, which is designed to allow you to configure your own gauge if your gauge isn't one from the default library. As I just mentioned previously, um, we don't use the engine model and manufacturer as the database. We use the senders and gauges. So your best bet is to find out the model of the sender and gauge that you've got. Um, if you've got any questions or if you're not sure if it will work or not, then drop us an email and we'll be able to help you with that. So we've recently just released new firmware for the EMU. Um, to update your EMU to the latest firmware, you'll need to download Accents Toolkit from our website and then connect to your EMU and update it. To connect to your EMU, you will need to have an NGT available as that's the NMEA 2000 gateway that sits in between your network and your PC. It allows you to essentially remotely configure your EMU. So rather than you know, having to move it or if you had to configure it by direct connection, the NGT removes that complexity. Yeah, in terms of new features on the EMU, um, we've made improvements to the TACO stability and the readings, so it supports a wider range of inputs and can give you more precision. On top of that, we've also enabled the configurable engine hours, which I know a lot of people have been asking for. So as long as your EMU is on the latest firmware, which 
is again downloadable from our website through Toolkit. Um, you'll be able to configure your engine hours to actually change the value to what your engines are currently on rather than previously where the, it was essentially an EMU hours count. So it would only count from when the device was first plugged into the network. The EMU can actually act in place of gauges or work with them. So it supports direct connection from sender or from tapping through the back of a gauge as well. You don't have to do one or the other. Um, there are certain nuances to how they have to be connected, especially if you're using things like dual station, um, but that's detailed in the user manual anyway. But no, you can have the EMU in situ with the gauges. Um, what really would be a, a sort of ideal setup for you is that you can actually move the gauges out of the area that they're currently in, whether you know they're probably using up um, real estate either in the helm or somewhere like that. You have the ability to move them, put them in a you know in a cupboard out of the way, so you've still got them if you need to read them. But the emu is handling all of those values for you. Currently, there isn't any support for Bluetooth on any of our products, be it. Um, configuration of other devices connecting to specific access devices on the network. It is something that we're looking at implementing in the future, uh, probably through our wireless gateway, the W2K, but again, I can't give a, a certain answer as to when that will happen. So really to understand whether you need one or, or two emus is, what we would need to know is what you're actually looking to monitor as the EMU has six gauge inputs, four alarms and two tacos. So it depends more on how many gauges you're wanting to monitor. If you've only got three gauges on each engine, then sure, you can use one EMU because you'd use up all six. But if you're trying to monitor, you know, four, five, six gauges from each engine, then you would need two to successfully complete your installation and monitor everything from both engines. <laughs> To configure the EMU, you'll need an AccentSense NGT1. Uh, there's two variants, the NGT1 USB and the NGT1 ISO. For ease of use, um, the NGT1 USB would be the recommended for this scenario, as it's a plug and play device where it plugs into the NMA2000 network at one end through the device net connector, and then it would just USB onto your PC at the other end. The PC would handle all of the driver installs, provided that it's got internet connection and then it's ready to go because it will set up the virtual COM port for it as well. To purchase any of our products, you can go through our website to the Where to Buy page and it will point you to your nearest local dealer or distributor. Thank you for watching. And if you've got any more questions that you'd like answered, please visit our social media.